November the 10th, our legislative meeting. Uh, if we could please introduce ourselves, that would be great. Christy Rachel, Assistant Clerk. Leslie Hervey, Clerk to the Board. Good afternoon. I'm County Commissioner Denise Driehaus. Jeff Aluto, County Administrator. Thank you so much. Stephanie Summer is President of the Commission Board. Um, you have before you um, your agenda, um, and it is your agenda. Uh, that we're meeting the, the needs of uh, what your requests are, and that's how we end up putting it on the agenda. But first and foremost, uh, I would ask that you have a moment of silence, and then after that, a pledge of allegiance, uh, if you can stand. But I would like to mention Jean Heenan, who was on the uh, Board of Revisions Committee um, for many years and passed away uh, just a few days ago, and the board will be providing her uh, family a resolution of condolences. So if you could have just a moment of prayer for her. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and, and I would just like to say with Jean, uh, when I became uh, chair of the Board of Revision, um, and even before that, she would come up to my office and send me all the hearings that had happened and all the appeals that had occurred and explain to me their process of the Board of Revision. So uh, she will be sorely missed, I'm sure, by, by many people. Um, Vice President Reese, would you like to just introduce yourself? Ann? Thank you, Commissioner Alicia Reese, Vice President of the Board. Thank you, and I'm not sure if you wanted to make a comment. Yeah, I, it's just about Jean, uh -huh. um, because I too had a lot of interaction with Jean when I was the President of the Board. And um, she took public service very seriously and was a tremendous asset to this county, uh, put her heart and soul into the work that she did. And, and I think, you know, I'm very grateful for that work and the connection, as you say, that she made sure that we had with the work that was going on. So a, a big loss for the county. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner Summer Jimis. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Dreamhouse. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, we have presentations. Um, we also have a public hearing, but I'd like to um, see, it's kind of a reflection over there. Um, I'm gonna go on with the presentation. We have a proclamation honoring National Adoption Month in Hamilton County, and I'll read our proclamation from the board. It's a proclamation honoring National Adoption Month in Hamilton County, whereas all children deserve to live in a safe, happy and healthy environment and be loved and protected by their caregivers. Whereas approximately 400 children in Hamilton County await forever love from permanent families. They dream of homes where they will be nurtured and comforted. Whereas children who find permanency and feel forever loved suffer less trauma, fewer mental health and behavioral issues. Whereas November is recognized as National Adoption Month to call attention to the thousands of children nationwide who are waiting for forever homes and families. Whereas seven children officially joined six family, families last week in special Hamden County adoption ceremonies. Whereas we recognize the importance of adoption for the children of Hamden County, Thank all the child welfare workers involved in adoption for their dedication and honor those families that have already opened their hearts to adoption. Therefore, be it proclaimed that the Hamlin County Board of County Commissioners declares November 2022 Adoption Month in Hamilton County and encourages the community to consider adoption. Be it further proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio, hereby proclaims November 2022 as National Adoption Month in Hamilton County, and it's signed by all our commissioners. I'm going to open it up for any comments, and I know that our director is here to accept our pro proclamation. Vice President Reese. Uh, thank you. I just want to uh, uh, join in commending those who have adopted and uh, uh, those who step forward 
So uh, we have a lot of children that need love. So if anyone's out there considering or thinking there are families who are unable to naturally have children would like to still love children. Um, and we have these opportunities for them. But I do want to thank those who have stepped up uh, these loving families. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Driehaus. Yeah, thank you. Um, I too want to say thank you to the families that um, are willing to adopt in this community. There are many and they're heroes really because we have we have kids in this community that can't be safely at home. And so um, if they cannot be reunited with their families, we need to have folks in this community say yes to adoption. So um, I'm glad that we're recognizing the month and want to thank those that have risen to the challenge in Hamilton County. Thank you. Thank you so much. And always remember, there's always an in-between. In other words, what I'm trying to say, you could get a child for an emergency uh, situation. So you can kind of maybe, or a temporary situation, or uh, just a maybe a three-month situation. So just think about if you're not um, maybe interested in adoption, there's all kinds of ways that you can lend a helping hand uh, for children. So Director Patton, would you like to come up and just say a few words? Thank you, commissioners, for the proclamation today. Uh, I can't say too much more than what has already been said in the proclamation. Uh, we need families all the time. And so we wanna thank the families who step forward uh, annually uh, to, to um, help children in care that we care for and uh, create forever families for those children. So uh, just appreciate the acknowledgement today. And also wanna thank the staff and the, and the workers who work so hard every, every day uh, working to find forever forever families for children that we are uh, uh, responsible for. So thank you very much. Great, uh, we're gonna take a picture with okay. you. Okay, we have lots more work to do. We have about five minutes before our public hearing. I don't wanna want to be premature. Someone may be coming uh, for that hearing. So, um, but we definitely don't want uh, to go into our county uh, administrator's report because it will be much longer. Um, so why don't we go to public comments and see if we have any, none on Zoom, okay. And I did not see receive any cards. So, um, all right, well, why don't I just take this time to say thank you. I can do that. Um, uh, we just had an election yesterday, uh, Tuesday. And so I thank everybody who came out to just vote in general, that you, uh, your voice is your vote. And so certainly appreciate, we would like to have more people who have come out. Uh, I think it was a little less than 50%. And I uh, certainly uh, am appreciative of those who um, had enough confidence in me to vote for me for another four years. So I get to be with these ladies um, and these gentlemen uh, for a little bit longer. So I certainly am um, just honored by the confidence that the public has uh, put in um, with me and the fact that the things that I'm doing, that's um, a lot of people believe in what I'm doing and they showed it uh, through their vote. And I had a little cute thing for my board up here because I just love them, both of them. And I thought about the fact of, oh my God, what if I don't get to see them every, at least every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, so I wrote a little, you know how I write little poems and all, but it's very short. And of course, Stephanie starts with an S. So I just used the S to describe this group. This is the most, I know I've watched boards before, not as closely because I'm involved, but this group of women, commissioners, the things that we've done, I am just so proud to be a member of this board. Um, 
just dynamic. And so I just was going to say, you know, we went through the good and the bad and what was going on in the county. We came through the pandemic. Of course, we balanced uh, the budget uh, with help of course of staff and so we're structurally balanced everybody knows that we're moving forward we got a, our ARP money uh, and we're doing our CARES Act money and we distributed it the way uh, we really investigated and looked at what was the best way to do that as a team um, and so um, there's not I think we're going to go down to history in history as the most dynamic productive commission board ever that's what i think so anyway i just wrote a little thing with s's i think we are strategic our group is just very strategic we all have our own interests and we fight for those interests no matter what they are uh, but we make sure those interests are the same as our residents interests uh, we're a little sassy i think we can be a little sassy sometimes and then we are very sensitive. In other words, if somebody comes to us with some stuff that we don't think sounds good for this county, uh, we're gonna listen, be fair, but we're a little sensitive. Now, have the people been asked about this? You know, do, do they know about this? Did they give their input? So we're very sensitive about what we hear and what we do because this is gonna be a legacy. Uh, we can be a little stubborn. You know, we say we want this point and we're not budging and whatever it is, I may, you know, I'm known to be stubborn, but then uh, also we can be sophisticated. When we go wherever we're going, we represent this board so well. And that's another reason why I'm so proud of us. And we are stupendous. And we are superheroes. And what makes a superhero? Somebody who gets out there against all odds and we figure out which way can we go? What kind of strategies again do we need to, to use? And when I say it's not about us, but we're superheroes because the monies that we receive, the decisions that we had to make, the policies that we had to approve, we took the hits sometimes, but we kept on ticking because we knew it was best for the county. So I just want to say thank both of you. I'm just very proud to be a part of this team and look forward to uh, 2023. Thank you. Right at 1.15, so I timed it well. So let me look at what our, um, our public hearing, let's get to that. And I think, uh, Jeff, are you gonna lead it or is, uh, Mr. Beck going to, it's a notice of a public hearing regarding the rehire of Gina, no, you're not, Gina Richmond as a purchasing agent three in the purchasing department. Jeff? Or yeah, Jonathan? Madam President, I'll call on uh, Frank Spataro who will uh, walk the board uh, through this and uh, Jill Williams, our purchasing director who is here as well. This is a hearing that's required um, by Ohio Revised Code as it relates to the rehire of an employee. So Frank, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, the uh, the purpose of this public hearing is to discuss the rehire of Gina Richmond in the purchasing department as a purchasing agent three, uh, and to provide interested persons an opportunity to express their views concerning the rehire of Ms. Richmond. She retired um, September 30th, and we um, uh, Section 145, 381 of the uh, Power Revised Code requires a public meeting on this issue uh, between 15 and 30 days before the employment, uh, before the re-employment of Ms. Richmond. So that's the purpose of this hearing here. And uh, the board did pass a resolution back on August 11th um, that provided the 60 day notice um, of the uh, department's intent to um, rehire Ms. Richmond. So this is the last step of public hearing. And if there's any uh, persons here who want to speak to it, this is the opportunity. Thank you so much for that explanation. You said her retirement date was September the 30th? Yes. So uh, at the point that she retired, and I hear about the 60-day notice, uh, she knew at that time that we were going to have her come back, and it was her desire to rehire, to uh, retire first? 
How yeah, there, it's required that um, that there be a break in service by the uh, um, uh, OPERS, the pension board. So <clears throat> she was in. She expressed interest in coming back. The purchasing department uh, is looking to have her come back in a, in a short term engagement. So um, uh, she'll be eligible to be uh, to start employment uh, anytime between 15 and 30 days of this hearing here. And I read that it was it was going to be temporary, but I guess my question is, why did she not just stay on rather than retire and come back? I can't, I can't answer that question. Perhaps Jill, Jill. Um, I know it was a personal decision on her part. And then um, it's part of the plan of the purchasing department, the succession plan. We would need people, her to come back to train employees and future employees. Okay. All right, thank you, uh, Vice President Riggs. Question? No question? Okay. Yes. If I could just very briefly, um, and this relates a bit back to uh, prior uh, board uh, policy guidance, just in terms of wanting to be, uh, we, we look at the rehire of retired employees only in very specific situations. Number one, where it's necessary to fill uh, capacity in critical positions like uh, children services workers, 911 workers, that type of thing, or um, if it is necessary on a temporary basis to help train and facilitate a departmental succession plan. So um, it, when these items come before you, it's either going to be because we have a position that is absolutely critical to the health, welfare, and safety of the organization, or, or the public, I'm sorry, uh, or where we are looking at a short-term engagement uh, for a succession planning purposes, and the, this, the latter is what this falls into at this point. Thank you so much. Okay, I'd like to make a, uh, well, I'll close the public hearing. I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Commissioner Summer Jumas? Yes. Commissioner Reeves? Yes. Commissioner Dreamhouse? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, let's move forward. Um, comments and motions, I'll get it started. Um, I just wanted to mention as I was sitting here a minute ago, I just wanted to mention that I forgot, I talked about uh, my commission colleagues and not wanting to be without them, but I think about the staff that are here. And I've said it before, and I know there are other staff members from other places that I've gone, but I have never met a more professional, equipped, experienced staff as I've seen here. And uh, just um, that is so important when you're running an organization such as this. So I wanted to say that I'm just really happy to be back with our staff. So I'm gonna move through, I don't have a whole lot. Um, I went to an OKI meeting this morning I just wanted to correct for whoever's watching that uh, Eric was in there and the question was we were talking about electrical vehicles and then the president or one of the ones that was leading the meeting said, who all has a uh, electrical vehicle? And Denise was there and I said, and so the reason why, and then I, he said, oh, it's four people have electrical vehicle. And I think the reason why I raised my hand was because I see myself as Hamilton County. And so they, who has electrical vehicle? I know Hamilton County has electrical vehicles, but they were talking about personal. So I have to kind of separate my personal from, from the county, but I thought it was a good thing. So whoever, I had to let Mark Polinsky uh, know that I don't, and then Denise said, you, she caught me after me. You don't have an electrical vehicle. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to kind of clear I that. I only said it after you brought it to my attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll move forward. Um, Okay, also uh, we are honoring veterans um, and Ohio counties play an important role in helping our county's uh, veterans transition back to civilian life, both through the Veterans Service Commission and through a myriad of programs across the county. So we're gonna have green Operation Greenlight. Uh, and I talked about this the last, I think I talked about it on Tuesday, November the 7th uh, to November the 13th and our county buildings will be shining green to, uh, uh, honor our veterans that have been in service and that are still in service. So we wanted to make sure uh, that you knew that we were shining the light on our veterans. And also, let me get my little list so I don't. 
Uh, there was a meeting yesterday, uh, regional safety complex update. Uh, we're not calling the Lincoln Heights range anymore, uh, the gun range anymore, because it is not their gun range. It just happens to be over in that area. So the group, uh, the regional safety complex update, there were many people there. Commissioner Driehaus was here, was there. Uh, my chief of staff, uh, Bishop Hilton was there. The mayor of Woodlawn, it was actually held in Woodlawn. The mayor of Lincoln Heights, the mayor of uh, Evendale, um, GM Michelle Lemon, vice mayor of Cincinnati, and another city rep. And so conversations are continuing to go on. We are not forgetting about that Lincoln Heights, Evendale area. We will not uh, forget it. And what we're trying to do is get that area closed. Um, and so there were some estimates that were given out about the range. It went all the way up to 42 million. And so our county people have looked at it and are thinking that we can reduce that cost to 27 million down and maybe even less, I'm not sure. But right now we are thinking that it can be reduced down to 27 million. And so there was a, um, an agreement um, because the city is, is not, um, we're working very hard on it. They're working hard on it, but the city is kind of dragging their feet a little. So within 30 days, the city's going to come back and tell us where they are on the commitment as it relates to the amount of money and also some of the bells and whistles that people want at that uh, at that range and the fact that you can do things in phases. You don't have to do it all at once. Um, so I just wanted to. Uh, and we, as a county, had all in, we were putting in, um, but we are also looking at now uh, 10 million more to make this process happen. So I'm sure you may have some comments about that. Um, let's see what else I have. <clears throat> I also wanted to announce um, we, uh, the county is having a walk up COVID 19 booster doses Wednesday, November the 16th. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here in the front of this building, Hamilton County Public Health and Hamilton County Commissioners teamed up to bring a walk-up COVID-19 vaccine clinic in this lobby downstairs, Top B Platoon Center. So bring your vaccine card and it's open to the public. Everyone six months of age and older is eligible to get a COVID-19 vaccination. I thank my chief of staff for pulling all that together and I'm gonna be the first one in line to get this last booster. Um, and then I got a uh, email, I don't know if you guys got it, ladies, uh, em Emily Moser sent it about the animal care, uh, our animal care system. Um, and she immediately talked about how she feels that our animal, Cincinnati animal care uh, in her opinion, is much better than the SPCA. Um, and so, but she has a great concern about the amount of animals that are in there. And I know we've been talking about having a temporary housing facility to house some of these uh, dogs and cats. And it's just, um, in her opinion, uh, running over at the animal care. Um, she says, unfortunately, there's a boom of homeless animals due to inhumane breeding, housing laws that don't allow pit or other aggressive dog breeds and the pal of animals uh, people no longer have time for after COVID. And the reason why she lives in Walnut Hills, the reason why I'm bringing this up is um, um, we're thinking of all we can do to help these animals and to in the overcrowdedness. And I'm just thinking if we can think of some other ways immediately to try to uh, deal with this issue um, on an even temporary basis. I know we talked about building a facility. We're very uh, concerned. We want to do that and we will do that, but until we're able to build, what else can we do? Uh, some people can take uh, animals for foster care. We've talked about foster care earlier, but they also have it for uh, animals. So if you're interested in that, but that will not help the overcrowdedness over there. So we just have to kind of think outside of the box. And lastly, um, Director Patton sent out a memo I wanted to share, um, trying to get the word out on something that can really help a lot of parents. The CTC or child tax credit deadline is November the 15th. Um, the CTC for tax year 2021 is up to 3,600 per child. Tax year 2021, 22. Is that what it was? Okay. Okay, um, and you can, and it says under six and 3,000 per child ages six to 17. 
You can get this money even if you have never filed taxes before. The United uh, United Way will help you file now. It's not a difficult thing to do, and they will help you to do it. It's it's really important when you need assistance for sure. And uh, and he says, and I could have you read this, but uh, he we think it's so important that we sent out almost fourteen thousand texts and more than seventeen thousand emails last week to people who were active on one or more public assistance programs. So please um, look into it. It's additional money that I'm sure uh, people, parents need. So I wanted to emphasize that. And I believe that's all that I have for now. And I will pass it over to Vice President Reese. Thank you. Um, first, let me start off by saying congratulations to you. Um, definitely want to say congratulations to you and uh, glad to have you with us back together. Um, I also want to, what'd you say? She's getting me in trouble, getting me in trouble up here. I also want to um, com uh, commend all of the candidates that won um, in this election. I want to thank those who did come out to vote. And I want to also commend our board of elections uh, who um, I think we have one of the best early vote systems in the whole state. Most people are very envious of how do you guys do it down here in Hamilton County. And uh, one of the things I had uh, Joy Reed on MSNBC asked me about Ohio. I said, well, let me say this. Hamilton County, our voters, our election system, our early vote. I said, you always talking about up north. You got to give a shout out to Hamilton County. And uh, election night, uh, some people came to me and said, we got a shout out about Hamilton County and what we're doing down here. I was like, great. So I appreciate that. But I want to also thank all of the volunteers who volunteered to work on election day and some of our employees that uh, volunteered uh, to work on election day. I want to uh, also highlight uh, in my office, I want to Veda, I saw Veda at election day volunteering. So everybody that volunteered and helped make the election go, I want to just uh, thank you all. I have a couple things that uh, besides the election that I was doing, um, I want to uh, highlight that Arts Works had a groundbreaking in Wana Hills, and uh, I was unable to attend, but um, Veda Stevens from my office was there representing our office. Uh, it was a great uh, event, and certainly the great work that Art Works is doing around not just the city, but the county. So I was happy uh, that I uh, want to give them a congratulations as well. Also, uh, the uh, meeting that you mentioned, uh, the facility formerly known as the gun range, which is now the regional safety complex. Um, a beta from my office was also there. We can't as commissioners, all three be there uh, in one place unless it's a public, uh, a public hearing or a public uh, meeting. So I just don't want people to think if you don't see one of us or you only see one of us at a meeting like that, it doesn't mean that we don't care. It's uh, blame it on the ORC, the Ohio Revised Code. We're not allowed. So I don't want to say, oh, I didn't see you there. I get that all the time. I didn't see you at that meeting about the gun. You didn't, what you, where are you at? So we are aligned. Um, I do want to highlight that I think that, or not think, I know that we took a bold step. There's been a lot of people talking for years about uh, this facility that, uh, located at Evendale, but sound go all the way through Lincoln Heights and Woodlawn. And there was a lot of folks that talked, but we actually put our money where our mouth is, $5 million. And technically it's not just a county issue. So it requires a lot of partnerships. Uh, we don't own the range. Uh, and so we're trying to step in to say, let's partner and we're gonna need some others to help partner with it because it is gonna be a regional facility, which means it will be regionally used and we're correcting a problem that should have been corrected a long time ago. So I wanted to uh, thank everybody that was at the meeting. I know Commissioner Driehaus, who was there herself will talk more in detail about the meeting. I also wanna say in the future, I think it's important to have our administrator at the meeting. We're getting ready to go over budget in a few minutes. And uh, he's the one that's kind of been working with all of the different components. We've been giving him the guidance of what to do. 
but he's the one that's been in all of the different meetings and knows how to shift over here and shift over there. I was able to come with a, um, a rendering and as talking to all the different players. And I just think it would help us. Uh, we each can go to meetings, obviously, but to have the administrator there who could talk about this money or that pot of money or this was said or that wasn't said would be great to have the city manager of Cincinnati also being there because if you put the city manager and administrator in the same room, I'm sure they could come together with some packet and be able to get the packet to both the city and the county. So just wanted to just add that I think that um, Administrator Ludo should be included at these meetings. I don't know if he was, maybe he wasn't available, but um, I think it cuts down on us. He said, she said, run back, let me check. I don't know. He's sitting right here. What is it? And he's able to uh, articulate it. I think can move the process a little better. I uh, wanted to say that also yesterday, I, uh, got invited by Amber Twitty, who is with the Central State Extension Program. And I'm very proud of the Central State Extension Program because my time at the State House, uh, there's only two universities in Ohio that have land grant statuses and qualify for federal funds for extension programs. Ohio State is one of them. It's very difficult to get. Um, Central State is another one. Um, and I was very uh, involved once they got the land grant status to make sure that they got funding because the, the uh, federal government matches the state funds. So if the state is zero, then they get zero, even though they got land status. And so I was very uh, instrumental along with Quentin, my chief of staff, he was the SGA president, he was in, in school. And we were fighting to have equality and make sure central state who got the land grant status would be able to access those federal dollars. Because of that, the extension program, uh, we were able to get it. And uh, I would like to say it was easy. It was not. Uh, we lost in the in the finance committee. We lost on the floor. Uh, but representative, former Representative Beakey from the Republican side said that I had brought it to the attention and that I owe, he owed me a, a trip to Central State. We went to Central State called in Quentin, the SGA president, along with the president of university. We had this incredible six hour meeting. I said, my gosh. And he went back and we were able to get the funding from the uh, governor at that time, Kasich, to put $5 million into central state. They got another 5 million. Their extension program is moving. And it's here also now in Cincinnati. Amber Twitty invited me to see the work of what happened later, years later. And I was happy to go to Aiken High School, invited by Amber Twitty uh, and uh, former representative Dale Mallory, former representative Beakey uh, to meet the USDA's Natural Resource Conservation Services Chief out of Washington, DC, Terry Cosby, who uh, gave a grant to Aiken. It's beautiful what they have down the chickens. And I mean, it's unbelievable. We went down this hill and I started thinking, wait a minute, I'm still trying to rehab my knee. How am I going to get back up the hill? But I went all the way down and we got to see what they were doing and these, these high schoolers. And it was incredible. So it was great to also meet again, the USDA Natural Resource Con Conservation Services Chief for the United States of America, Terry Cosby, and uh, he says they have a lot of funding for this type of extension program. And of course, I said, I need more in uh, Hamilton County. We'd love to give you a whole lot of tours and let me get you with our administration because we need the money if the money is there. So um, that was really good. I think it'd be a great contact for us. I'd asked uh, uh, Administrator Ludo uh, about a month ago or a month and a half ago that I wanted us to get more connected with the USDA. They got a lot of other areas. This is just one area. They got a lot of other areas that could bring money back. And according to uh, Chief uh, Terry Cosby, they're looking. They're looking for partnerships and they have funding. So um, hopefully we can reach out with our lobbyists and other folks to uh, connect with them. Today, I also presented a proclamation on behalf of the board for um, at the uh, SORWIB meeting, uh, Southwest Ohio Regional Workforce Investment Board. They got a new name, but I don't have it right now. I can't remember it, but they got a new name. We'll be back with the new name, but the same mission. 
And we met over on the West side. It just brought so many memories back. My first La Rosa's, the original La Rosa's, um, my first roller skating rink, Rollerama, that's not there anymore. But we were we met at the IBEW NECA Electrical Training Center that used to be the Circuit City. I brought my first TV there. It was just a lot of memories there. But we had our meeting there and I presented a proclamation on behalf of this board signed by all the commissioners recognizing uh, apprenticeship, a uh, Greater Cincinnati Apprenticeship Week uh, and National Apprenticeship Week. So and it represented it to the Greater Cincinnati Apprenticeship Council uh, that were there. And one thing I just want to give a shout out for the apprenticeship program. It's a program where you could get paid while you train. It's not like go train and don't make any money. You can get paid while you train and then you come out and have a career uh, work or start your own business. So um, I do support the uh, apprenticeship type program uh, with the Greater Society Apprenticeship Council. So uh, those are the things that I have. I would like to let the board know I am also working on revitalizing the uh, pharmacy discount card. Uh, I'm look, People are looking for breaks. Inflation is hitting us every which way. And people are looking for what can we do to have a break. So this uh, pharmacy card working with uh, Director Patton and uh, his team and uh, the HR team to bring this back out. So we should be seeing some pretty soon so that people can go. And uh, I understand medicine is going up. So when they go, they could use this discount card and get a discount as a resident of Hamilton County. So we'll be bringing some back, but I just wanted to give the board a heads up. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you. Um, I too wanted to congratulate you on your victory on Tuesday on election day. Thank Congratulations. You. Um, you never left, so I can't say welcome back. But anyway, <laughs> glad to have you. Glad to have you here. Um, and and also um, thank those who ran, whether they were successful or not. I mean, we need people to run for office on either side of the aisle to have a robust conversation about what government does and who should represent us here in our uh, local jurisdictions, whether it's the Congress. The, the county commission, the recorders, I mean, you know, all these countywide offices, the judicial races, um, we had victory on all three levies that we supported as a commission. I was delighted to see that. And they all had um, pretty nice margins uh, when it came to their victory. So I'm glad that that money will remain in two cases and increase slightly in for uh, mental health services here. Um, and thank those um, that went out to vote. We had about 50% turnout. Um, the Board of Elections did a fantastic job. I voted early this year. Uh, it was very easy to vote early, but I was also out and about on election day and everything seemed to be going really well. So congratulations to Sherry Poland and Alex Linzer over at the board and the board for the Board of Elections for a, another well-run election day. Um, really, really grateful for their work. Um, also, I wanted to talk about an event that I went to uh, to honor Suzanne Burke, who is over at the Council on Aging. All three of us signed a resolution or a proclamation to name it her day. She was being honored by 55 North, which is a group that has day services for seniors. And so Suzanne does so much work with the Council on Aging, keeping seniors in their homes when they want to stay in their homes and age in place. And so 50 North um, is another piece of that where they provide services for folks during the day, uh, seniors in particular. So I was happy to represent the commission there. And then I was going to mention um, the safety complex meeting that happened yesterday. A, a lot of folks in the room, um, your uh, chiefs were, were both there, as you say, and I know we all three are very interested in this issue. Um, as was mentioned, this commission pledged $5 million a uh, number of months ago to make sure this project moves forward. The administrator has now recommended another 10 million on top of the five to continue that forward progress. And so that gets us further along. We are trying to work with the city to better understand uh, phase one and the amount that it will take to launch phase one. Uh, we're confident that that number is in the $25 million range, uh, but we do have to work with the city to make sure that uh, their needs are met, the sheriff's needs are met, and we, we are working together. And uh, Administrator Aluto has been 
very helpful in providing those facts and figures as we have these meetings. So uh, looking forward to for forward progress. Sherrod Brown's office is the convener of the meetings. And so they have pledged that we will have another meeting in 30 days to regroup and uh, kind of hone in on the number for phase one and where we are going to uh, advocate to try to get um, some additional funding for this project. As you say, it's so important on many different levels, including the Im negative impacts to Lincoln Heights Woodlawn, uh, but also the economic opportunity uh, issue with Evendale. And so I did mention that both of your offices have been involved, whether it's reaching out to GE for um, some potential donorship dollars or whether it's reaching out to the AG's office, we're trying to hit this on all fronts and that we're all three working to make that happen. Um, lastly, I wanted to mention that I've got a new intern as of today, um, Alex Manor, 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 Manor um, is here, another Alex. Um, he's from Elder High School and he's gonna be coming in a couple of days a week uh, into the office to help out. So this is his first, first exposure to any of our meetings. I assume you're not watching online, Alex. Just jumping to that conclusion on my own. Um, so, um, but welcome, we're, we're thrilled to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad you brought up about Senator Brown because when I met him um, last year at another, not met him, but we convened together at another place about a year ago, he indicated that the gun range was a prior, top priority on his list. So I'm so glad that he's convening this one. And lastly, since we won't be able to talk about politics anymore or the lawyer or get us. Uh, so since we're almost done talking about it, I have to, I'd be remiss if I did not mention my small but mighty team that brought us through all of this. They may be watching as a dad, you didn't say it, but I have to uh, mention them and their hard work and their focus and never lost focus. So I'm done with that. And I wanted to mention, um, as you mentioned also something I wanted to add on to about um, the ones that did not win. And we we need winners and losers and they're not losers. Keep going. I lost in 20, 2006, uh, believe it or not. Uh, some of you were probably not even born. No, I was just kidding. But I lost in 2006 for a commissioner, but I was determined that this is where I wanted to be. And I kept going and kept going. And in between did the mayor and the village manager stuff and gig and uh so now i've commissioner and done and i'm doing it for a second term so just hang in there and keep doing what you're doing you know what your passion is you know what your gifts are and we support you we all campaign together and uh we love you uh the winners in those that did not accomplish your goals yet so we'll move on to jeff since we left him out completely as a presentation and um so jeff um county uh administrator are you going to do um your by leave first um madam president i'm happy to or i'm happy just to go right to the budget presentation and do the uh, uh and do the by leaves um within the uh, the course of the okay. consent agenda, but I'll, I'll defer to you in terms of how you would uh, like me to hit it. Okay. Well, you you've been very patient, so why don't you move forward with with the recommended uh, budget? Okay, happy to. Uh huh. Um, so, uh, commissioners, uh, this presentation on your agenda is a presentation to um, uh, release the administration's recommended 2023 budget. Uh, so I'm happy to to do that today. Uh, as a note, I believe, and I'll look to John, I think that right now the budget is now um, live on our, our website, um, as, as it should be as of this point in time. Uh, this is also for the public that is watching. I want to be very clear uh, that what I'm about to present is the administration's recommended budget to the board. This is not the budget passed by the Board of County Commissioners yet. So um, if there's any criticism uh, to to uh, come come out on this is to be directed at the administration at this point, not at the county commission. Uh, the, the way the process works is the administration uh, provides a recommended budget to the board who will then deliberate over it, Take will take time in staff meetings to ask questions, uh, work together on it, and then, uh, and I'll walk through the timeline a little bit later, um, but ultimately the board will approve a budget that has its fingerprints firmly on it. But that is not this at this point, although there's, there's a lot in the budget uh, that I hope um, uh, reflects board uh, policy priorities. Um, just as a as an introduction, I think this is an exciting budget for uh, a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, this is the first time uh, since the quarter cent sales tax was implemented by the board where there will be both a full 
year of revenue collection and at the same time not having a uh, worldwide health pandemic. Uh, so uh, this is really the first year where we're, we're doing where we have both of those, where we have the, the full revenue from the quarter cent and at the same time, hopefully uh, we're putting uh, COVID uh, in the rearview mirror. Uh, five years ago, this county was on the brink of fiscal emergency. Uh, we were facing a 30 to $40 million structural budget deficit, which means that the things that the that the county needed to do, the things that the board needed to do, uh, were not sustainable with, with current revenues. Uh, so the board at that time instituted the additional quarter cent uh, as the union terminal sales tax rolled off, so there was no net increase in, in uh, sales taxes. Uh, that decision ultimately stabilized county finances, and place the organization in a position of, of operating as a modern uh, 21st century public sector entity that residents can be proud of, um, and that is an organization that, uh, as the board has uh, dictated, uh, is one that prioritizes innovation and service delivery, partners with our local communities uh, on revitalization and resiliency efforts, um, addresses the maintenance and stewardship of our assets, and perhaps most importantly, one that creates an environment uh, conducive to attracting and retaining the best talent in the community to perform the work uh, of the public. And the, I want to just take a little bit of time, and we're noting some of the, the pictures in the budget presentation here. Um, I wanted to take a little bit of time as we get into this budget presentation to talk a little bit about those people. Um, it's obviously the employees of this organization who do the work uh, that is that underlies uh, this budget. And if you're watching at home, uh, the, these are the people uh, who protect our our most vulnerable children and employee or, or in residence? Uh, they're the ones who answer 911 calls. Uh, they're the ones who patrol our streets, monitor our elections, uh, steward our community's tax revenues, ensure the safety of new buildings, and, and so much more. So the first couple of slides here just show you some of those people. Um, there we go. Uh, so th this first slide is just a kind of a panoramic of of pretty much, all, I believe, almost every employee that we onboarded under the Board of County Commissioners uh, over this past year. Uh, we've now taken the, the step where every, um, we don't have an employee come on under the board without myself or a member of the administration meeting with them directly uh, to walk through what is county government and maybe more importantly, um, how their specific job, whether they're an intern all the way up to a department head, um, uh, is important uh, to the work of the county, that they understand um, how county government is structured, who the commissioners are, all those things we walk through uh, in that onboarding. Um, the second slide here is, I know the, the board is familiar with the Employee Advisory Committee. They meet multiple times a year uh, to provide the administration with feedback on how we can make the county a better place to work. Um, so I want to thank the Employee Advisory Committee for all the work that they've done over the course of this year. Uh, and the third slide here shows some of the great work that employees of the county are doing. Um, we are putting in place award-winning environmental programs, uh, building state-of-the-art crime lab facilities, improving customer service around uh, our permitting processes, uh, and getting over the course of the past couple of years and over the next couple, getting uh, close to a quarter of a billion dollars out into the community uh, to help with the social and economic uh, needs uh, surrounding COVID. And we know they do uh, so much more. Uh, but I felt that I'm trying to fast, I'm trying to forward through here, Bridget. There we go. Um, I felt that unlike past budgets, I just wanted to make sure that we started with an acknowledgement of those employees because of all the work they do. Um, in terms of um, the broader work of the county, I just wanted to make sure the board was aware of some of the stats that we've seen um, over the past year. Uh, this is a county uh, where the sheriff patrols territory that covers about 138,000 residents. Uh, we recycle about 1.3 million tons of waste annually, keeping that out of the landfill. Process uh, 5,300 building permits. Um, we uh, initiated 1,300 1, kinship placements through job and family services to keep kids with kin. Uh, we, we finalized 120 adoptions. Um, we have 110,000 residents receiving monthly food assistance uh, through Job and Family Services. Uh, we supported 13,000 families uh, through rent and utility assistance. Uh, 1,200 seniors receiving utility support and, and critical home repair support um, through the actions of the Board of County Commissioners, uh, answering 283,000 911 calls and 1,700 
uh, referrals for, for treatment and wraparound services for those uh, experiencing the pains of addiction through our uh, quick response team. So um, there's so much more than this. We could spend hours going through the different works of, work of the county. Um, you know, we, we do over 113,000 um, uh, court filings every year. So the work of this county is just nonstop and plays such a huge role in the lives of people that I just wanted to start with that today. Um, that being said, um, a budget is about numbers. So we have to uh, go into some numbers here. Um, uh, Bridget or Christy, I'm, I may need some help here because this is not working. Thank you very much. Um, so the all funds budget that I'm presenting to the board today is uh, totals 1.2 billion. Uh, the general fund budget as a portion of that is 352 million. Uh, that is up from 324 million last year, an increase of approximately 8.6%. Uh, the general fund employee base um, uh, facilitated by the general fund budget this year um, is at uh, uh, is an increase of 33.22 positions. That's an increase of about 1.3%. Um, I do want to take a little bit of time to walk through the all funds budget in term, especially the, the board. This is uh, this is very remedial for the board. I apologize, uh, but for those who may be watching at home, uh, the all funds budget consists of the general fund budget. Uh, which is the primary operating fund of the county, uh, supports many, much of our general operations, including public safety operations of the sheriff, the coroner, 911 center, uh, gen general government activities like the Board of County Commissioners, administration, um, elections, HR, uh, our development operations like planning and development, economic development, uh, and some of our social services as well, like reentry, veteran services, addiction services, uh, debt service, that type of thing is funded through um, the uh, general fund. Uh, Christy, if you could hit. Thank you. Um, our restricted fund budgets, um, are these are funds that which can only be spent for specific purposes dictated by law, regulation, policy of the board, etc. So um, this would include things like our occupancy tax in our convention district, our, our park, our parking operations, uh, child support, senior services, um, our uh, indigent care levy, our mental health levies, um, our uh, uh, children's services levies, um, as well as things like our delinquent tax collection funds or environmental services funds. So um, there's a, we have a, a huge array of funds that through the Ohio Revised Code and for some other reasons can only be used for very specific purposes. Uh, the all funds budget comprises both the general fund and the restricted funds. And I'm going to talk as we get into the, into the discussion about the budget um, in I'm going to talk from the a very broad perspective. Um, it, there are some funds that are not legislated in the course of the all funds budget, like grant funds, et cetera. Um, but that's really getting pretty wonky when you think about it. The, the, I think what the public wants to hear is what's the work of the county. And this board has talked about breaking down silos and talking about the story of the county uh, without uh, breaking into those silos. So I'm going to talk, my presentation today is going to focus broadly on the work of the county and as little as I can on restricted fund, general fund, grant funds, those types of things, because I just think that's less useful. Chrissy, thank you. Um, here's another way to look at the uh, all funds budget. Um, in terms of the different funds, you have the general fund, which is the largest single fund uh, in the county. You've got job and family services, stadia and parking, developmental disabilities, um, health care, all the way down uh, until you get all the way down to our zoo levy fund at 7.2 million. There's obviously other funds uh, as well. But this just gives you some idea as to how um, our, our funds are, are, are broken down. Chrissy, thank you. Um, our major revenue sources. Uh, sales tax, um, again, for those who may be watching at home, want to know where the money comes from. Uh, sales tax is by far our largest general fund revenue source at $143.7 million. Um, uh, we have three quarters of a cent um, that we that we levy for general fund purposes. It goes to our general fund. There's an additional half a cent sales tax, not shown here, that goes to our riverfront sales tax fund. So in the county, if you're buying something in the county, we actually have a one and a quarter cent county sales tax, but only 0.75 of that goes uh, to the general fund. For comparison, 
Uh, Franklin County has 1.25 going to the general fund. Cuyahoga, 1.25. Lucas, 1.5. Montgomery, 1.25. So Hamilton County is a bit rare um, when you think of our other urban counterparts in that we have a very low amount of levied sales tax that goes directly to our general fund uh, with uh, 0.5 going to the riverfront sales tax fund. Um, our, and just a few notes here. Uh, sales tax growth slowed during 2022. Um, we are projecting little growth in 2023 as inflation cools. Um, we're projecting stable property taxes. Um, and I'm just going through some of the major revenue sources here. Uh, we're projecting public defender reimbursement at 90%. Um, that's uh, we wanted to be at 100%, but just for um, context, several years ago, that was at 50%. So we thank our state partners for dramatically increasing the public defender reimbursement. Uh, we're expecting our real estate fees to come down a bit next year as the real estate market cools. Uh, we're also expecting um, continued um, rising interest rates and, and earnings at least through next year, although that could change uh, depending upon what happens with the economy and whether or not interest rates begin to lower in response to a softening economy. Christy? Uh, major expenditure drivers, uh, criminal justice and public safety is in fact 73% of our general fund. Um, we're also a, a people-focused uh, organization that's 66% of our expenses. Um, we're showing a 7.5% rise in um, the overall salary level, uh, salaries as a line item across the, uh, uh, across the general fund. That, that's inclusive of things like market rate adjustments. It's inclusive of new employees, et cetera. That's not to be confused with um, a, a general wage increase. Uh, healthcare costs uh, fall by two, uh, roughly 2%, um, and some non-personnel drivers as well in terms of uh, operating costs at new facilities like the EMA warehouse, um, the OSU Extension Office, the com new communication center, non-EMA uh, center, uh, body and dash cams uh, for the sheriff, uh, growth in, and growth in juvenile youth, uh, juvenile court youth services. Christy? So uh, general fund reserve, also a, uh, a major uh, component and indicator of, of fiscal strength uh, and financial strength, uh, our reserve remains strong. Uh, we're projecting a 61.4 million reserve or 17.4% um, at the uh, end of 2023. Uh, the Government Finance Officers Association recommends uh, two months of operating expenditures, which would for us would total right around 59 million. If you look throughout the, the country at communities policies on this, uh, especially larger urban communities, you'll find typically 15 to 20% on average uh, in terms of what communities um, establish as a policy uh, for their general fund reserves. Uh, we are uh, projecting at 17.4%. So we're right in that, uh, in that general ballpark. Um, uh, again, uh, this is uh, the purpose of the general fund reserve is uh, to provide capacity for cash flow, for capital financing, uh, to insulate the county against major financial shocks. Uh, again, you can look back to 2018. You can see we were um, at roughly half the amount we are now. We were at 13.4%. And there were some years even before that where we were uh, much, much leaner. Um, so uh, this is uh, a, a good thing from a financial metric perspective in the county. Christy? Uh, this... Uh, chart is a projection of our five-year plan. Um, the budget that has been delivered to the board has a more detailed um, accounting of our five-year plan. This is just a graphical representation of that. The big gap in the middle uh, from 19 through uh, 21, essentially, is the impact of COVID. Um, our expenses dropped as we uh, sig expected significant revenue reductions, and the county, you can see the way the county responded, uh, not... Uh, just uh, departments under the Board of County Commissioners, but departments throughout this county elected, um, uh, uh, separate elected offices as well, who understood what was going on and dramatically reduced expenditures in response to what everyone thought was going to be a complete shutdown of the economy. Uh, you can see that revenues tapered a little bit, but ultimately and amazingly uh, did not uh, fall like we thought they would. Um, and so now you see the continuation of the five-year plan is essentially a structurally balanced plan. 
uh, you'll see that as you get out into 2028, you start to see what almost looks like a um, an aberration, but the the uh, the expenses start to tweak up above revenue in 2028, and that's really more of anything more than anything just a product um, of the formulas that go to drive a, a, a five year plan when you're starting to project out that far. At some point in time, things are going to cross, and that's where uh, they they cross. We'll continue updating that as we move into those years. So now into the, the guts of the, of the budget, uh, the administration took the actions of the board in 2022. Uh, we combined those with the departmental budget presentations that the board heard uh, and budget uh, guidance from each commission office and developed a budget that focuses around five key policy areas, operating an effective government, investing in our local economy, maintaining a safe community, fostering a thriving community, and protecting our environment and public infrastructure. Uh, I believe the 2023 budget responds um, uh, substantively to all of these um, and is reflective of a modern customer-centered organization. I'm going to walk through very briefly um, uh, some highlights of each of these. This is by no means an all an exhaustive um, recitation of everything in the budget, but I did want the board and the public just to get some highlights here. So, Christy? Uh, effective government. I'm going to talk a lot in the moment about economic development, social programming, public safety, but uh, ultimately you can't have those things unless you are uh, performing well internally. Uh, so, uh, to start with, this uh, budget is financially solid. Uh, it's structurally balanced. It invests in technology to power some of our most critical functions. Uh, we have a jail management system currently out for bid that I had uh, placed in uh, prior budgets going back probably five years. We're now working with the sheriff to get that uh, out on the street. Our purchasing department's budget uh, includes funding for the operation of a new procurement system, uh, which integrates uh, our uh, inclusion efforts. Uh, it also supports the initiation of a new web-based permitting system uh, in planning and development. Uh, for perspective, uh, about five years ago as an organization, our directive to our facilities department as they looked at doing preventive maintenance on county assets uh, was you have no money. Uh, if something is broken, come back to us and we'll talk about how and whether we go about fixing it or not. Um, those days are, are behind us. We have uh, 3.5 million. The budget allocates 3.5 million in proactive capital maintenance efforts. Uh, to our facilities and includes a, an attachment in your budget is ongoing capital projects um, totaling uh, roughly uh, actually over a hundred million dollars, uh, some of which I will uh, talk about uh, here in the uh, in the coming sections of the of the presentation. Uh, the budget includes a three hundred thousand dollar earmark for implementation of many of our inclusion recommendations uh, from the disparity uh, from the I'm sorry from the disparity study. So um, everything from a prompt pay program for vendors uh, to establishment of contract specific goals for participation of minority and women owned enterprises. Uh, it continues the expansion of our employee benefits uh, with an expansion of our tuition reimbursement program and continuing our HR development programs like our high performance organization training through NACO. Um, and as I know the board will be interested in hearing includes a 3.5% uh, general wage increase, along with a 1% uh, bonus uh, to be allocated by departments based upon uh, performance. Uh, the, uh, the operations of our uh, uh, of the county also are included in the budget include um, taking as many programs as we can, but starting primarily with job and family services uh, out into a satellite office to be co-located uh, with the EMA warehouse that we were in the process of acquiring. Christy, uh, the budget uh, invests majorly in the local economy. Uh, I'm just going to walk through these very quickly, but the recommended budget supports, um, uh, it keeps the community revitalization grant program at $3 million, a $1 million uh, community impact program, um, all of the affordable housing um, from our home federal dollars, as well as our ARPA dollars, um, uh, you know, uh, as the board knows, close to $30 million and 17.5 into, into housing production, 5 million into uh, spe uh, housing specifically focused on uh, 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 senior, disabled, and reentry populations. Uh, investing in broadband infrastructure, we have 10 million in our ARPA funding, um, 
put aside for broadband infrastructure improvements, uh, $2 million in site readiness. Uh, we have uh, the, the continuation of the Office of, of Small Business and the continued and the reemphasis on, on branding and con coordination and consolidation of, of small business activities under that, under that office. Um, our parking and convention district operations were uh, the two restricted funds that were probably hit the hardest over the course of COVID. Uh, we established in 2020 um, a restricted fund stabilization fund uh, uh, at $12 million uh, to support those funds. This budget uh, recommends uh, uh, releasing that, that stabilization fund into the restricted funds of the parking operations and convention to, and, and occupancy tax. Um, there is no recommendation yet on the amount of that 12 uh, to go to each. We're gonna wait and see how the, the year closes and come back to the board with a recommendation based upon the model uh, of each and the health of each fund at the end of the year. Uh, the, uh, the budget supports the activities of our economic development partners, including Alloy, Port, and, uh, the Port, and Ready. Uh, it includes the operations of our planning and development office, which is the really the front door to economic development in the community. And it includes uh, the completion of phase three of the banks, including the uh, Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame. And also, if you look on top of that picture, that is a picture of the Finley Market parking garage coming out of the ground uh, in the Finley Market community. And that is also included um, in our capital budget uh, under our parking operations. Christy? Uh, the budget uh, support, supports public safety. As the board is aware, and the board has said mul multiple times, uh, public safety is one of the uh, key activities of local government. Um, so the, and the, the budget invests in public safety in numerous ways. First of all, the upkeep of our Justice Center uh, and Youth Center. Uh, the capital budget contains over $15 million of projects in design or under construction uh, uh, aimed at both of these facilities, um, inclusive of, as the board has indicated, uh, the repair of the locks and windows uh, at the Justice Center for the safety of the, of the public, as well as our, as our uh, officers um, operating the Justice Center. Uh, it includes the, the completion of the build out of close to 100 treatment beds, uh, also over at the Justice Center. Um, it includes funding for the construction of a consolidated EMA 911 center at 10.2 million. It includes funding for the staffing of our Welcome Home Reentry Court, which we heard from Judge Cross and Trina Jackson uh, a few meetings ago, uh, and include and includes bu uh, a budget for the staffing associated uh, with uh, with that particular court. Um, it includes, uh, while I don't have it on this slide, I wanna make sure because it was just mentioned a little bit earlier, um, it includes funding for the continued operation of our animal shelter and dog warden functions. Um, it includes a $13.5 million budget in the 911 center, uh, which includes the retention of the $5 detail rate for our 911 operations. Um, that is the charge to every community for on a per call basis uh, for use of the 911 center. Um, that the fact that that is now at five dollars instead of what it had been up closer to twenty is saving communities uh, in this in, in this county roughly three million dollars annually that can go right back into their public safety budgets to hire police officers, firefighters, and, and uh, capital equipment. Um, the budget funds the upgrades and upgrades the operations of the sheriff's body cam and new dashboard camera program. Uh, there was some news uh, the other day about a home invasion out in Green Township. Uh, the sheriff uh, called me immediately after that saying, um, as we get the dashboard cameras uh, on board uh, in next, that's, that are funded in next year's budget, this is the exact, exact type of incident that this would have helped um, track those individuals um, very quickly. Um, it funds the operation of the sheriff's office in a way that uh, facilitates the sheriff's efforts to be uh, a more technology and intelligence focused operation. So this includes the funding of six officers in the, in the sheriff's intelligence unit to promote uh, intelligence led policing, uh, uh, the reduction of crime hotspots and the reduction of violent crime through community oriented policing in areas such as Lincoln Heights. And it also funds the transition of the sheriff's aviation unit uh, away from traditional helicopter uh, enforcement uh, more towards one that is more driven uh, uh, by a nimble approach focused on officer and resident safety through the uh, employment of drones in the in the community versus traditional um, deployment of helicopters. 
Go ahead, Christy. Thank you. Um, the budget is a positive force uh, in helping our community's residents, including our, our community's most vulnerable, thrive in the community. The all funds budget supports the entirety of our JFS operations. Um, uh, the, this, and I just want to remark that this is the first year that you have a budget document that includes uh, a substantive narrative around uh, job and family services. I want to thank uh, Director Patton uh, and Mike Hiles and his staff for um, making that happen and leading into that process and, and helping us with it. Uh, but it includes 32 million for economic stability like SNAP, TANF, and Medicaid, 16 million for child support. It includes the continuation of our kinship stipend, uh, which has been largely responsible for upping the number of children in kinship care from 25% of our children in custody up to 30% over the past couple of years. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that this uh, budget uh, contains what I believe to be the probably the boldest and most robust uh, allocation of funding for services for uh, for children uh, in the county with a budget of 146 million as facilitated through the children's services uh, levy. Uh, the budget supports our mental health operations, including the transition of our mental health mobile crisis unit to 24 seven. Um, and uh, includes five million for our 513 relief operations, including the operation and programming of our 513 uh, relief mobile tech bus. Uh, five million for the Office of Youth and workforce uh, additional workforce programming. Uh, the Office of Youth, I think we have close to 2,700 uh, enrolled in that program at this point in time. It includes uh, just over a million for our senior utility and home repair programs consolidation of our addiction response programs under one programmatic umbrella. Uh, and as was indicated earlier, uh, the earmarking of an additional 10 million for moving the CPD gun range from Evendale to the Sheriff's Regional Safety Complex in Coleraine Township. Uh, county government also does a lot of work uh, related to the health of our environment and infrastructure. Uh, the budget funds the oversight efforts related to the Metropolitan Sewer District, given the county's ownership of that utility. Uh, those funds are reimbursed by MSD. Uh, the budget funds the county engineers' efforts uh, to maintain our roads and the 421 bridges uh, in Hamilton County the, uh, at a total of $35 million. There are $4.5 million in restricted funds for recycling and solid waste planning purposes. 315,000 for watershed management, and a total of approximately 7 million for fire hydrant maintenance and stormwater uh, operations in the county. Christy? I'd be remiss if I did not just talk a little bit about budget risks. Um, we saw a, uh, earlier on in the year, a significant uptick in, in sales tax, which has started to slow. Um, uh, and I think we recognize that that may have been driven a lot by inflation. Um, so we're seeing a bit of a slowdown in that. We're obviously always run the risk of an economic downturn. We've been hearing about the prospects for recession for uh, for some time. We obviously hope that doesn't occur, uh, but that's certainly a risk. Uh, inflationary pressures and wage pressures are just some of the traditional budget risks we face in any budget like this. In terms of a timeline, um, the departmental requests came in in April through July. The board passed the tax budget in July. Uh, we received board policy direction uh, through the summer and the fall. We had balancing and departmental presentations August through October. You're now getting the uh, administrator's recommended budget. Uh, we will have public hearings in November and December uh, with proposed adoption December 15th. Um, the one thing that is not written here um, is that routinely at our staff meetings, we will start putting budget discussion on as a routine item with every staff meeting so that if the board has feedback, has questions, things you want us to look into, um, we can certainly walk through that at that time. Go ahead, Christy. Uh, in terms of uh, proposed public hearing dates, uh, we were proposing a first public hearing on Tuesday, November 29th at 1 p.m. here. Uh, we were proposing a second public hearing on Thursday, December 1st, also here at 1, uh, and a third public hearing in the evening uh, at Tuesday, December 6th at 6 p.m. at a location to be determined uh, with tentative board approval at December 15th. We typically put out a schedule like this uh, for the board's consideration. If the board wishes to change this, modify it, add, subtract, um, it is uh, certainly uh, free to do so. Um, just in terms of, as I conclude and turn it back to you, Madam President, uh, I just want to thank a few folks. I want to uh, thank John Bruggen, 
uh, our assistant administrator for budget and finance, um, and his staff, Lisa Anderson, Camden Bentley, Cheryl Floyd, and Rob Wagner for all of their help. Um, this was a monumental task in pulling the, this budget together. I want to thank John for it. Uh, John also volunteered at the elections yesterday. So in, in the midst of, of pulling the budget together in its finality, also found a way to serve the public and uh, through another vein. Um, also want to thank uh, all of our uh, the, the leadership team of the county, Holly Christman, Bridget Doherty, Lisa Webb, Frank Spataro. Uh, I want to thank Mark Von Allman for his efforts as it relates to the economic development aspects of this. And really, at the end of the day, all the county employees, elected officials, and most prominently, the Board of County Commissioners for your policy guidance uh, through this process. And at this point in time, uh, Madam President, I'll turn it back to you. If there are any questions today, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, we've typically used this particular session as just a, the time to get the budget out. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the board has only had it for a very brief amount of time, and we would then set staff meetings for more uh, deliberative discussion over questions, et cetera. Thank you so much for your overview. Um, just a great overview, uh, as you said, <clears throat> a recommended budget uh, that we will be looking at, that we want our residents to look at. If you're listening to us uh, this afternoon, take your notes. Uh, on things that you uh, may uh, see that are good and things you might want to add on or any kind of comments that you may have, certainly you can also contact our offices in between hearings. Um, as you were saying, Jeff, not going to have any specific questions right now. Uh, just uh, looked at this. I'm going to continue to review the budget. I know, as you mentioned about risk in the back, almost the last page, um, we also need to consider, I think, the PTR and how what impact that will have on our budget, maybe not for 2023, but as we move forward, um, we, we have to certainly consider that. Wrote a few notes as we look at structures, and I talked earlier about the animal care uh, building and whether or not uh, this is, I know we added money in for repairs and things like that, but the fact that we may have to build a whole new structure um, is, I didn't, it, the entire structure yeah, amount is in there. It, it is not the uh, the replacement and a and an <clears throat> estimate on the replacement of the animal shelter is not there yet. We do have a capital project right now, uh, county facilities to um, start the looking at the the scoping of that facility from a needs perspective. I think it's in there at three hundred seventy five thousand. Um, but the actual number for construction of a facility is is not in there yet. We would have to come back to the board for a financing plan when that was ultimately put together. Okay. Thank you. And um, I heard about, um, as we were talking about the body cam, uh, which is great and that the, the cost of that, but the biggest cost other than the body cam cameras themselves is the record retention cost. Um, and I'm on the public safety uh, committee for the for the state, for the CCAO, and um, they've talked about that is one of the biggest uh, battles to how do you retain this information for the amount of time you need to do it and the cost of retaining it. Um, and lastly, I was thinking about like our revitalization grants that we're using uh, with our ARPA money. We have to look ahead and and, try to determine how can we provide some of those services and some of those grants when that ARPA money runs out. Of course, we have to dedicate our ARPA money by 2024 and spend it by 2026, but how do we move forward and do some of the great things that we're already doing that we're uh, ARPA is allowing us to do, but how can we continue to do it uh, when that money is, is no longer there? And just a small thing I was wondering, you don't have to answer it now, but I know we used to have dog licenses and then that stopped. I think the auditor's office stopped that. And I'm not sure, I don't know if we were. There are still dog licenses. It's a, it's a small amount of, it, it, relatively speaking, a small amount of revenue uh, into, oh, the location. John, you want to hit? We'd have to get back to you with details. Typically, they do um, still sell at multiple locations during the licensing season, but not year round. I think it was in, one was in Forest Park or something. Anyway, mm -hmm. you don't have to answer. I didn't want to ask any specific, but I was. And the reason why I'll just the reason why I brought up dog licenses mm -hmm. is because I'm trying to think 
is there anything we got away from doing that we could maybe incorporate or start doing to increase revenue in somewhere? And it depends on who's in the position. Like we're going to have a change in the auditor's position and the, and the clerk will remain. But I'm thinking like, is there something that maybe the auditor took away uh, that we can bring back to generate revenue? So thank you so much. Um, um, Oh, the new facility as we look at the satellite office. Um, and so we have put some money in there, but we may want to consider as a board, um, you know, rather than renting a space, because we're, you know, I'm, we're very adamant that we need to have this space available. Do we want to buy a small space somewhere um, rather than continuing? We haven't started yet, but to lease an area. And do we want to do that? Is it cost prohibitive or whatever? But as we look at the satellite office, I'm hoping we'll bring that to fruition because I know we're continuing to look, but if we can hopefully put a timetable on it and the board decide also whether or not we want to buy a facility. But just general comments, but this is great. The staff has really done a great job bringing it together. Uh, Jeff and you have also, uh, but we'll continue to to look at the big book and uh, thank you so much for the summary, uh, Vice President Reese. <clears throat> uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I do look forward to getting, uh, well, I've already started getting deeper into this budget. Um, and then I think uh, Madam President, you have brought up and this is your issue. I don't wanna uh -huh. take your issue on here, but it did say in our book, I guess that the license fees people getting licenses for dogs are going down from what I see it in here, saw in here rather. And therefore we, we're using, uh, we're dipping now more into the general fund. Generally speaking, that's been the case for several years and it's continued to be the case in the last few. Thank okay, you, so, I didn't see that. Thank you for pointing that out, so you. yeah. Yeah, that was good. So maybe um, certainly what um, President Dumas is talking about how to increase of uh, the get more light people, more people to get licenses. And we, I think we're using it with 3.5 million. It's is been the, three and a half million for the last three years. Yes. So I just wanted to bring Thank that up Madam President, mm -hmm. for you. Um, certainly there are a lot of uh, areas. I, I think overall uh, the report in terms of what we've been able to do mm -hmm. and uh, the amount of people we've been able to impact has uh, been incredible in our last uh, our last budget. And now as we're going forward with this budget, just wanted to uh, make sure a couple of things are in there. I know it's mentioned the Office of Youth and I'm just gonna, uh, all of us put out uh, what we'd like to see in the budget. And at some point, certainly wanna share that publicly with the public of uh, some of the things that we thought was very important to be inclusive. But last year budget, we had said we needed to have an office of youth. There's a lot going on with youth and everyone is everywhere I go. Stop me. What are you doing for the young people? What is the youth? What's happening? And the more we can keep them in positive structural activity around good leadership and mentors, the less we'll see hopefully of the increase of violence among uh, our young people, murders among our young people. And so I'm very dedicated to the Office of Youth. Now I'm on Sorwood board and there was a presentation made by JFS, but honestly, I don't want more of the same. I think we were trying to get this office going and I don't know if we put the right amount of money. I'm looking at in this budget, we're gonna have a new office or I guess office of, um, where was it? Alcohol, we're hiring a new person in this budget. It formalized the budget recommends the formalization of the uh, of the office of addiction response. So um, that's really just a consolidation of of the uh, the programming currently um, being implemented by the board, whether it's the grant programs, heroin task force, the one Ohio programming, that type of thing where we had shotgun throughout the county. We're just bringing that all together under one. Yeah. Love it. What you just said. Love it. I support it. But I want the same thing for you, Office of Youth. That's what I've been trying to say for Office of Youth. That's what I've been trying to say for the Office of Small Business. And we're not doing that. We're just 
even every time it's presented, it's always the youth program. So it's not really an office of youth. I want the same, per- and we're even hiring somebody for that office to coordinate, which I support. I want the same thing for the office of youth. I want the same thing for the office of small business. Office of small business, the recommendation in here, and small business is the future. We just came from from uh, Sorwood, a lot of people are not getting jobs because they're going into business for themselves. A lot of people don't want to work for somebody else. So people want to be a job creator. So we have to go with a trend of small business. And out of this COVID, we could be the number one, which I want us to be, number one for small business. And so with that, we can't do it with just every alloy. I mean, I know we say, oh, we're going to change. We're gonna... If you didn't change your branding, you didn't change the mindset. I'm not interested in just scratching off alloy and put a name on it. I want the mindset. So I'm trying to figure out in this budget, and I'm not, you don't have to answer today. I want to know what I need to put in. Cause last time I put it in, it didn't, it didn't register. We passed it. It never registered. He was, Oh, I forgot. It's the youth program. Oh no, I forgot. Scratch that out. Office of you. No, I'm interested in the same model that we're putting for the drug addiction as I want for the office. I like that we got an office of drug addiction. I want an office of youth. The same model, we got the office of drug addiction. I want the office of small business, not alloy. Give them $100,000 and you guys rip and run and come back. I want structure. So maybe I did it wrong. Maybe I need to write it more detail from beginning to end. I'm willing to do that. But I don't want to say we got an office of small business and we don't. It's just a sad show. I don't want to say it's the office of youth and it's just the same thing we already had, but we just scratched it out and put and move the words in front of each other. Uh, this is not to you, Bruges, so you don't have to stand there if you don't want to. You can rest your feet. But um, I want to make sure I get that right because I really believe those are two areas that deserve to have somebody hired, somebody that's connected with the sixth floor. That's sixth floor. People don't know sixth floor is like, I don't know, 31st floor, if you're in if you're in uh, the state house, it's the 30th floor. But if you're, we want someone connected here that can report back, what are we doing with the youth? How are we doing? Are we doing good? Should we do something different? And someone who can report back with the small business as well. So um, the, that's one thing that I, and I saw. Madam that President, I like. and Madam Vice President, if I just very quickly respond, um, uh, the I think the budget, exactly what you just said, we've attempted to reflect in this budget. And I think you'll see that um, uh, in contrast to, to past documents and past budgets, it's not called the youth program. It's called the Office of Youth uh, that we're looking to much more effectively streamline, just as you said, with the Office of Addiction Response, streamline all those programs under each of those two um, so that they can be implemented and messaged accordingly just as you just as you indicated I would not differ with that at all okay because I was reading it and it was a quick read we may want to do some editing because it doesn't it's not the same I looked at uh addiction response you did a very good job laying it out we're gonna hire somebody it's gonna be this 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 and this but on the other one it was the same language that I saw in last year's budget and I said maybe I did something wrong when I did it to sent it to you so I would like it to be mirrored so who's going to be the person hired that would be able to report to you, the director, as well as the sixth floor? And who are we hiring that won't be just alloy that they have a lot of clients? And it's just, oh, you know, we're going to give them a PowerPoint. So I just think in the narrative, I like to see it spelled out a little bit, a little bit more so we understand it. Yeah. And making sure that is that the right amount? that will be able to really do something. I don't know if 100,000 is the number or not. Uh, that's probably one person's close to their salary, 70, 80,000 plus benefits. On that note, I think what is not written there, um, and we can, again, provide some more detail is, and as the board has indicated in the past, you know, all of the other programming, we have all the other small business programming, the grants through ARPA, et cetera, uh, to funnel up under that office so uh, as they are small business related, that they are implementing all of those. Um, and it's not the different silos as we've talked about before. Okay, thank so you. That, so that 100,000 may be a little bit misleading uh, in terms of the total dollar value uh, that will be associated and flow through that program. Okay, I would just ask, um, and I'll put it in right, but I asked if we could have that reflected in the in the narrative, in the budget document, 
so that it's a little more better understanding. On here, you have a continuation of the community land bank operations. And um, I was told that we have to do that. I'm not against the land bank, but we were told that we had to continue the way that we are. I, it's no secret that I have some concerns about how things are set up. I'm really trying to break up monopolies. I, I, I mean, I know that maybe people can't come to this meeting or they can't talk to us, but one of the biggest things is people concern that this uh, city and the county that we have uh, allowed monopolies to exist and really will be dangerous as we go into the future. If there's only one or two entities that own all the property, one or two entities that control all of the um, all of the uh, uh, programming on it. Uh, if we uh, continue and you begin to see that you have an entity that you give them the money to buy the land, then they control what land goes into a land bank where they don't pay any taxes. And then they control who gets those properties outside of the land bank. Now, it's easy for us to say, well, you guys are all on the land bank. Well, three of us, we got a, a stronger majority here than we do when we go to the land bank. Go to the land bank, you open it up, it's three plus other people. I'm concerned about a monopoly. How in the world can you be your own checks and your balances? I don't understand how we do that in government. The Port Authority can buy the land and then they come over here. They don't pay taxes on. They decide which properties we pay taxes on. Then they determine if any if you in the community, I don't want you to have a property. I want you to have a property. You don't get the property. Then they get to tear down and then sit on property. If you go through the black community, we got all this property just sitting there. It wouldn't sit there if they had to pay taxes because Jill Schiller would be sending them a note that they got to pay. But you can sit for Swift and they've been sitting for years. It was Swift and now it's some villages and it's something else. It's been sitting there forever. But if you was paying taxes, it wouldn't be sitting there forever because you would be in tax debt. And we have a lot of those things happening. So I'm just curious, because if I got a vote on it, you're saying on here, it's recommended. I was told that it had to happen. I would like to get some clarity because one of the things I really want to do is break up monopolies. I want to have everybody have a fair shot, but we can't have five entities that own everything. And they've got the tax credits, they've got uh, no taxes they gotta pay, uh, they don't they control the land bank, they control the property, they control the neighborhoods, they control downtown, they control the convention centers. Come on, we got to, they didn't put us here to have one or two entities control everything. So I'm concerned about this land bank. I think we should have it. But I've been getting complaints from people who want to get property out of land banks, but it's like this unelected hidden figures that decide, no, I don't want you. I want you. I don't want you. I want you. I want you because you're working with me on something else. I don't know how we do that. How do we break up these monopolies? So just a, a quick response. We can certainly have more uh, more dialogue about it during the, the budget process. But the the operations of the land bank, it's a, it, it's a, a bit of a complicated structure in that the Board of County Commissioners um, and the Treasurer levy the additional 5% uh, DTAC. Uh, that's delinquent tax uh, anticipate delinquent tax uh, anticipation uh, collections, I believe. Um, that that additional 5%, the board has um, uh, directed that that go to the Hamilton County Land Reutilization Corporation. The Hamilton County Land Reutilization Corporation, which is the land bank contracts with the port for uh, implementation um, uh, of that programming. So there, in terms of the authority to control the money and the, and the authority to control that agreement between the land bank and the port, we can get the board a more structured uh, analysis of that and what you can do from this level as it relates to the operations there. Yeah, that would be great because you put on here continuation of community land bank operations. And then I'll be hearing, well, no, you can't do anything. Well, I ain't voting on nothing I can't do. Just you don't need my vote. you know. But I would like to know what we can do if it can be, you know, it's not I'm for the land bank, but could we put some conditions? You know, you get this, but can't sit on land for 20 years or something, something that we can do. So that would be great if you could tell us yeah, what and, our and so the question then would are. become whether that is a 
um, a function of, of the board through its uh, allocation of dollars to the Land Utilization Corporation or a function of the Land Utilization Corporation contract with the port. It, it, it could be one or the other. We just need to look into that. So we're happy to talk more about it. Or is there a restricted fund? It can stay there until we work out some good details. Right. A couple, there's some options yeah. we have to look at. Yeah, all the options. I would love to see, and then, you know, certainly all of us make it, it will help me be more educated on it. Um, the other thing that you have on here, you go into the convention district and you talk about the enterprise parking fund. Um, and you say you, you are anticipating that a portion of $12 million from the enterprise parking fund that is restricted. So, um, yeah, no, um, so can you let, help me with yeah, that? let me clarify there. So it's uh, actually it's not a portion of the enterprise parking fund, but um, and I kind of references in the presentation, the two funds that were impacted most severely during the COVID um, uh, pandemic were the enterprise parking fund and the transient occupancy tax. So at that point in time, um, through the budgeting process, the board created a restricted fund stabilization fund to help support those operations if they started to go negative. We never, um, we, we never allocated funding into them yet. Um, we actually used the restricted fund stabilization at one point in time uh, on a very, uh, in a, in a very small level to help with one of the engineers uh, funds. But what I'm recommending, both of those funds have been uh, dwindled down significantly because of COVID. And I'm just re recommending the release of that 12 million into the occupancy tax fund and into the parking fund. But what I said was we would like to wait until the end of the year before we determine actually how much, um, whether it's six and six or whether there is a different um, uh, proportion that's released into each of those funds. We just want to see the way each fund closes the year. And then we'll come back and recommend to the board which one gets what money and which one gets the rest. Okay. Because you reference it in two places in the budget. Yeah, because it does affect two funds, right. And then, but you mentioned it in concert with the um, convention district. So are you anticipating this going toward that or? I mentioned it with the convention district simply because the convention district has historically, uh, the county's investments in the convention district have historically been funded from the occupancy tax. Okay. So that's why it's in the two areas. Yeah. Um, I would like to get more information to understand all of our parking facilities. Um, because I know we we build them, we we accure um, accrue debt on them. Uh, we always say we could pay it back. I'm not saying we haven't, but obviously, uh, I think we've done a good job refinancing and those kind of things. But then when we look back, a lot of our agreements that we're building these these parking facilities, we usually on the days when you could get a lot of money, we've given those away to say the Bengals. Um, I don't know what the FC deal is going to be, but we give up the big day. And then the day when nobody's parking, then all of a sudden we it can go to the county, but nobody's parking in them. So I just wanted to know what that is. And I wanted to um, also highlight there were some complaints uh, from people going to the, the games, the Bengals games. They said $70 to go in those parking garages that we as taxpayers are on the hook to pay for. Uh, could you explain that we didn't set those prices? Am I correct? Yeah. So I think that that was in uh, one. Uh, there was an article recently written about that on Bengals game day. That was uh, that was the team that set that, that set those. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, th but you're you're correct. There is a um, with each facility. There's a different arrangement with the stakeholders around it. So we can give we can get the board um, some more detailed analysis or detailed mm -hmm. information around each facility, the agreements that re that relate to it, whether you know on the Central Riverfront, um, you've got agreements with Heritage Bank Arena, with Great American Ballpark and the Reds, Paul Brown City and, and the Bengals. Um, and, uh, and so there's different revenue agreements with, with each of those. Um, for instance, on special events, the, the, uh, it's split 50-50. There's a different uh, rate on, on game days, those types of things. Well, we can get that to the board. Yeah, and I'd like to know: Are these lifetime contracts, or when do they end? They, they those specifically. Terms, I'm talking about the parking. Yeah, as it, as it relates to the to the teams, 
uh, they would relate, they would extend through the lease, through the life of the lease. Gotcha. Okay. So I just wanted to, because I know people are complaining about $70 and they feel like I'm paying to build it. And now I got to park, give me $70 to park in it. So I wanted to highlight that. Um, I've got some other things, but I will get to those a little bit uh, later in our conversation. I do want to put it, point out that um, in, in my, in my um, document to the administration, one of the things I wanted to look at was a children's services levy. Uh, my understanding there's money that's there that uh, is not being used and uh, not, may not be used. I don't know if the number's 100 million or what have you, but I am looking for if it's not, and I'm not saying go run out and try to find something to use it for, but if it's not, I'm looking at how do we give a rebate or something back to the, to the taxpayers. I think that is very important. Taxpayers, uh, everybody needs a break and any break we can give, I'm looking forward, I'm combing through. Um, obviously the PTR, we had that presentation. Uh, I'm certainly, uh, I support that 30%. I think if we keep commitments to the teams, we should take, keep the commitments to the people, but there were some other things we asked to get, uh, prior to that. I would hope that those will be coming looking at the tax holiday in Warren County. Uh, some of the other things, uh, the children's levy, uh, a possible rebate to the taxpayers if the $100 million is just sitting there. So those are things that I hope to um, hope to get and, um, again, be able to go through this a little bit more in depth, uh, which I am. I just wanted to make sure that whatever we put, even the 513 relief bus, uh, there are areas that I think would make the bus successful. Uh, it's not just a bus for rental assistance. And I have highlighted a lot of things that this bus can do. Um, my understanding, I think hopefully the bus will be coming soon. Uh, well, I know we're in yeah, November. We, it won't make November. We're hoping it comes. Uh, I think we talked about after, right after Thanksgiving. So we're still hoping maybe early December, that type of thing. Okay. Well, there are a number of areas that I put down with this, uh, what I call mobile Hamilton County relief uh, bus can do. And I don't know if it needs to be in there because I don't want people to get confused. Last time I just put it in and everybody started getting confused. And I want to make sure that this bus is one with dental care, eye care, farm discount pharmacy, uh, different services. Uh, talk to a recorder. He would want to have some services. Uh, talking to our, uh, if there's ways that people can get their um, uh, difference as it relates to Social Security, we could get other entities and it has a schedule that when it comes out it's got a lot of our services that can happen the clerk of courts what kind of services they can provide uh, as well the treasurer as we're going out we've got financial services we've got other services but we also have the health services so uh, I have a narrative of things that I think uh, from what I have heard and be able to get screenings on the spot, high blood pressure checks, cancer checks, diabetes checks that we can do at no cost. So we take this thing everywhere, everywhere from downtown to, to Cleves to help people. So um, I want to make sure that that is, I don't want people to say, oh man, the rental assistance stops. So the bus ain't no good. No, this bus was to bring all resources to the people in their neighborhoods, their communities, their municipalities, and do it in a way where we're able to provide service, not pamphlets, but service to the people. So um, just wanted to make sure uh, of that. Uh, and then last, the senior citizen fund, I didn't see in here, but maybe it's, it's in here. It's in, it's, it is in there. I'm okay. in the exact section uh, that's in there. I would also say that uh, in terms of the bus, that is in fact, the vision, I think, uh, as, as you kind of inferred, if this was just about rental assistance, it probably would, wouldn't be the need because we know that federal money is going to dry up at some point. Right. So, uh, so yeah, the vision is that this is a, um, uh, a service provision uh, bus throughout the, throughout the community, not just about rental assistance. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jeff, for the presentation. Um, thank you for getting this to us in advance. It was very helpful. Um, so we can follow along as we talk about this over the next couple 
of months or a month and a half at least. Um, I, I want to thank you for all the work that you've done on this. I know it took a lot of work. I know there were people here on weekends working on the budget. Um, so thank you. Thanks to John, the budget director, um, Holly, Teresa, the myriad of people that you already uh, thanked. Um, this takes a lot of effort. And I, I just want to let you know that um, it, this is a very robust document. It, it is a positive document. I mean, if I was to give it a word, um, it's it's a very positive thing for us to look at, to contemplate. And so I really appreciate the work that went into it. Um, and, and I know you talked about some of the ways to describe what we were looking at. And I would use words like stable. Um, this is a budget that's in partnership with our internal partners, all of whom we heard from at um, ver various meetings that we had, but also our external partners. You mentioned the 911 fee. You know, we have external partners that are relying on us to be fiscally responsible with this budget, and we have done that in this budget. And so I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, I also view it as forward thinking. There are a lot of new ideas in here. Um, it's a very innovative document. It talks about um, things related to some of the priorities of the board, also green infrastructure. And so we are moving into a very progressive space here at the county. I think it's responsive to the people that we all hear from every day, the constituents, whether we're out and about or we hear about it in our offices. Um, I think this is a budget that responds to the priorities of this community. And I also think it's um, a responsible budget given what we have to work with. And you did mention, and I, I wish I had my chart, I should have brought it, I brought it, bring it to another meeting about how much we are doing with 0.75 of a, a cent here where other counties far exceed um, that percentage when it comes to what they've got going into their general fund. And so while we have more than we have had in the past, we are still operating on a very lean amount of money for this county. For the size of Hamilton County, um, you know, we've done a lot with what we've got. So I'm I, I just do want to note that because I think sometimes that gets lost. Um, for those of us that have been around for a little while, um, I came in when we were just cutting jobs and we had nothing to work with. Um, and this is a very different kind of budget from where we started when, when I was here. Um, a couple things I just want to highlight um, as I reviewed uh, the budget, some things stick out that are um, themes, I think, from year to year that I think are noteworthy. Um, as you say, $352 million in this general fund, which is the money that we're primarily talking about. It's it's the restricted funds are in here. Some of the other JFS is in here. Um, but really, the general fund is where we have still um, room to move a little bit by way of impact. So just want to highlight that number. The reserve is at 17%. That is a very healthy reserve. 15 has always been our target. 17 uh, is even better. And I understand that with some of the economic uncertainty, um, we have to have some, uh, you know, that, that percentage in there. But I do want to recognize that that's a, a very substantial number in our reserve, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, I also want to highlight that there are raises in this budget. Uh, we went through a number of years at this county before I got here where nobody got a raise. For five years, nobody got a raise. Um, in this budget, people are getting 3.5 increases, which I think is reasonable. Again, it's, it's a very responsible approach, but also responsive to the work that folks are doing in the county um, for the constituents of this county. Um, so I did want to highlight that. Um, the community revitalization grant back in at three million. I think the um, it's very important for us to continue that partnership out in the communities. I, I can't list off all the communities that benefited from that, but these are catalytic projects that we are partnering uh, with these communities to to make sure that they can happen. It's like, it's like gap funding. So really glad to see that back in here as a recommendation in the impact grant at 1 million that really has a transformational impact oftentimes in these communities. I know Lincoln Heights um, received it the last time with a little bit going to Cheviot uh, to help them as well. Um, I also want to highlight some of the economic development investments that we've got in here, the site readiness money, um, and, the, and then the rest for the partners, the port, ready, and alloy. It's over $2 million in partnership dollars. And, and from my vantage point, we um, we have economic development expertise with Mark Van Allman in particular in, within the administration, but we also leverage our dollars with these other organizations to expound, right, and, and to amplify what we are doing by way of economic development. So I'm glad those investments continue. And then my last one was related to the gun range, the $10 million in addition to the 
five. Um, I think that makes it very clear that we are committed to moving this project forward as quickly as possible. And I'm grateful that that money is in the budget. Um, a couple of other things, and I, I don't wanna go into a great deal of detail because uh, I think we're all still digesting the complete budget in the presentation. Um, I do want to um, add a couple of things that um, I, as Commissioner Reese mentioned, we all um, had a document of priorities that we gave to the administration, um, hoping that some of them could be considered as the budget moved forward. If there was a majority um, support for that, they made their way in. If not, they didn't. Um, so I just want to highlight some of the things that I'm continuing to think about as we look at the budget. Um, some of the priorities I had listed uh, related to uh, infrastructure, and it's not only roads, bridges, um, highways, it's also bike trails, bike lanes, some of the multimodal things. We just heard, uh, I also was at the OKI uh, meeting this morning, and they highlighted and give emphasis to infrastructure projects that are multimodal, because that's where we are headed as a community. And so I want to make sure that we are continuing to think about bike lanes, uh, pedestrian sidewalks, so that multimodal is part of the vocabulary when we think about infrastructure. So I'm going to continue to press on that. Um, it's not so, it's bike trails, but it's also bike lanes. It's just it's just a way for people that don't have cars to get around, to get to jobs, to get to doctor's appointments, those kinds of things. So um, that that's something that I would like to prioritize. The large event grants are not included in this budget. Um, that was something that we had in the last budget. I don't remember. I think it was 1.5 million and and the purpose was to again be funding in partnership with the city and the private sector and and other public entities the chamber of commerce to make sure that events like the music festival and blink um, had the resources they needed to launch in, in in the city and so i i will continue to talk about that as we talk about what might yet be included in this budget um and then i had a couple other issues that are really not a dollar issues that i i won't go into but um i'm looking forward to the ongoing conversation about this with my colleagues and with the community um, i noted that we have three public hearings that have been noted and and um scheduled temporary or I, I guess on a temporary basis i i'm wondering and I will always wonder if we can't take more into the community. I, I noted the two of them are here and only one of them is out in the community. I'm hoping that we can do more than one in the community, whether that means, you know, we do three total and only one is in this building and two go out. That would be fine. But historically, we have really tried to make an effort to allow people to participate in the budget process. Um, sometimes they take us up on that offer and sometimes they don't. That's fine. I still think we need to offer. And so uh, maybe we have one to the west, one to the east, maybe one up north to the central. Um, I, I don't know. But I, I would hope that we would have at least two during the evening so the people that work during the day can get to a hearing um, and participate and, and weigh in on the budget that we're looking at. So that would be just one suggestion I have. Again, I don't know if that's an add-on that, that would be a total of four or just reconfiguring the three, but it's something that I'm always interested in as uh, getting, getting out of this building so that we're just a little more accessible to the public. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and we're certainly all concerned about public input and whether or not we have a, an additional uh, public hearing somewhere else we can I'm sure discuss within our offices um, and uh, see where we want to go with the chief of staff can coordinate that and see where we are um, but also this is our first public meeting and so uh, I know we're not being very specific now it's not really the the purpose of it but we will be even more specific. I know I will be more specific on certain details. And um, and as we have our public hearing and listen to what the public want, that will change some of our priorities, I'm sure, or maybe add some on. So certainly this was our first um, stop on the first review for everybody who's listening. Just had a couple comments. Um, I was thinking about, um, I don't know, Jeff, if there's someone who's actually assigned to like the, I remember the prosecutor's office when they came in with their budget was saying they needed more money for data collection. They were backlogged and things like that. When I, I'm wondering if there's anyone who's assigned to look 
where state monies are available, where federal monies are available. And the reason why I say that is because we put certain monies in here that we're going to fund certain things, but there may be outside money available uh, that can be used that we don't have to use our money. I know we had looked up the 10 million or something for from the state for data collection. Um, so I'm just throwing that out. Is there anyone assigned that actually looks? Because I, I, for instance, when I was in the state capital task force thing, we allocated money to a certain entity. Then I read about them. They also got it from this place and that place and this place. So is anybody gauging who's getting additional? Yes, yeah, so we have a couple of uh, points of contact on, on that. Number one, we have a uh, uh, in the budget office, Cheryl Floyd is our grants coordinator. Mm -hmm. So when primarily uh, when we're looking at the applicability of certain grants, um, we'll turn that to, to Cheryl. Typically, uh, she's been extremely um, active and successful uh, in getting grants from us. Uh, we actually have a, uh, a state grant, a couple of grants up at the state right now, looking at some uh, funding for uh, capital improvements in the Justice Center. Um, if the if the item is a little bit more nebulous in terms of not knowing whether anything is out there. Uh, we typically work with the Ferguson Group, our federal lobbyists, to see if if we can identify something. So in this particular case, we are looking at the specific uh, eligibility of those funds that were announced by the state uh, for application to um, the prosecutor's request. Um, so we're, we're, we're continuing to look at that, and we'll get back to the board with a more formal report on the eligibility there. Thank you. <clears throat> Two additional comments. I noticed at the beginning you talked about um, the general fund is uh, approximately 8.6% increase. Um, if we could, if I could, and I'm sure our, my colleagues would like, just a brief summary of what that 8.6% increase entails. We can look through all this, but in, just in general, how do we come up with the 8.6% increase? Um, and I also want to thank the staff for all the work that they've done on this. But lastly, I was just sitting here thinking about, as we review this budget, we could be in a certainly a different place than we are now. We are so blessed to be able to make the considerations that we're making to have the, as was mentioned earlier, the reserve that we have. And I was just thinking, boy, this, this thing could look so different. And so we are so... Um, fortunate to be looking at a budget uh, such as this and to be able to provide the services and the products and the people that we need to make this happen. So I'm just uh, really glad that we're in the situation that we are and we made some very fiscally responsible decisions. One of the hard ones we talked about was that sales tax, whether or not we wanted to continue it. And we made that hard decision and that really has made a difference for us, but many other decisions have been made to put us in this position that we're in now. So just really grateful for that. I feel you're itching over here. Oh, I was looking at, I'm sorry, I was, I'm going over my, uh, uh -huh. I was just going over my document I, and I uh, appreciate us having this conversation. And we'll, like you said, we'll get more into detail with the budget is the most important thing we do. So I know that we'll ha all have a lot of chances at it. Commissioner Driehaus highlighted some things in her recommendation um, uh, document. And I just wanted to uh, say that some of the things that were are in our documents did make it into the budget. Um, there's some that obviously we'll look and do some tweaking, but um, I wanted to just indicate, I know I mentioned the 513 relief bus, I mentioned the senior fund and uh, et cetera is in there, technology and broadband. I know we have funding, but it talks about kind of what we wanted to do. I wanted us to have a more text messaging based um, service because most people now do text messaging versus email. We saw that with the 513 relief bus. Oh, give us an email. And they had to make up an email, but they don't do email. So just making sure we have the technology to do things more text-based um, as we're moving forward. I, we talked about the small business office, the office of youth. Uh, we talked about um, uh, property taxes, which is uh, a piece in, in here that I have. But one thing I didn't talk about that uh, maybe didn't make it in this one, I wanted to look at diversification of possibly the $2 million that we do for site readiness to expand it. Um, I wanted us to be able to look at, uh, we've been doing some 
partnerships. I know with the Realtist, which is African American real real estate folks. Uh, we were just at Housing Opportunities Made Equal. How to increase African American uh, land ownership, and we have a um, uh, we had an earmark last year. It did make it into the budget that I recommended, but we haven't had a chance to get the. Uh, I think um, uh, Mr. Ludo was saying they're hiring a, a consultant, and we're now running out. The, the clock is running out, so I don't want the clock to run out because it was in last year's budget and the clock run out because we're in the fourth quarter and uh, we lose the game. Yeah, so. very quickly on that. So that those dollars are earmarked against the general fund reserve. So they are still earmarked and they will continue to be earmarked uh, until we pull them down and use them. So it won't it won't evaporate or go away until this board makes a determination to do so. OK, great. I just I didn't see it in here. I just want to make sure we all kind of know that. And I'm able to tell housing opportunities made equal. Uh, which we mentioned, I think Commissioner Driehaus was there as well, but I mentioned it that we had this available, but we were uh, taking some time to get it up started. So I wanted to do that. Prompt pay is in there. I'm glad to, to see prompt pay is in there. Um, I still like to see more inclusion on the banks. Uh, I know we have, you know, a half an acre out of 198 acres, and it seems <laughs> a couple people going crazy over a half an acre. Uh, but I want to see more than a half acre. I'd like to see, I don't, we don't have any African-American businesses on the banks. I like to diversify our consulting area. We have money for consultants. How do we diversify? Uh, how do we diversify that? So I had that in there to uh, add to it. Uh, child care and daycare for our employees. I still think we should take a look at it. I don't know. Uh, but I think if child care is the number one barrier, and we're seeing it as people come to Jobs and Family Services for help, then I think we could be a leader uh, in that area. So have that. And then um, also the Cancer Caucus. I know that might be more from a policy standpoint. Maybe that's why it's not in here. Uh, but I will be bringing that uh, because we've been asked to do policy and uh, finance. You already know what your policy is based on where you put your money. But this Cancer Caucus, I think, is an opportunity for us to bring more money back from Washington uh, by us being organized. Uh, and certainly everybody can agree we're trying to fight uh, this cancer. And then lastly, I had in here with the Convention and Visitors Bureau, I think they got about $11 million, I think uh, already in their coffers. But I would like us to look at expanding out that $2 million for just site readiness I would like us, I believe that we're missing a lot of money. Now, we might get one tournament here or there. I'm talking about every single week there is an amateur uh, sports tournament, event, cheerleading, camp competition, and we're missing out because we're not organized or focused on sports tourism. We spend a lot of money on these uh, professional sports facilities we got one over there it sits after the nfl season it just sits we got another one over here that didn't make it to the playoffs and they cost a lot of money but i believe that we need to focus on a sports on sports tourism amateur sports tourism which has an impact of 91.8 billion dollars and i'm not willing to give that to a different county so wanted to see if we could put the a team of people together to take a look at that um, and look at how do we retain, retain them here in the state, national and regional. And I think with a partnership of CVB, Convention Visitors Bureau, Ready Cincinnati, the port and others to look at what we can do as it relates to youth sports Tour. I'm not talking about one tournament at a time. We can't do it with the convention center because if you're booking a convention, which books a couple years out, you can't come every year because I might have a convention book the one year you want to come. I need something with these little minivans running and these mom and dads and grandmas and pawpaws coming with their kids to have these sports facilities. And it could be something that can be on the outskirts in the uh, different parts of Hamilton County. So I would like to have that looked at because we're missing out on this 
uh, $91.8 billion that is available. Now, this is not a recreation center. We have those in the cities and that's good, but we're talking about a facility that can host multi-sports, uh, pickleball tournaments to volleyball, basketball, soccer, swimming, something like that, that will give us room nights. Hotels want to build because they can get room nights and something that, like I said, get these little minivans moving and leaving the money back here in Hamilton County. So I, I had that in there to have us take a look at and try to come up with a plan. But youth, amateur sports, tourism, it's, it's, it's today, it's the future, it's now, and it's something that happens quickly. And I just think it's something we're missing out on. I'd like to have it part of our tourism plan that's in this budget. Thank you. Very quick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, just wanted to say for, to wrap up from a policy perspective, um, recognizing that there are things in each commissioner's uh, policy agendas that some of it made it in, as you all said, some of it did not. Um, I put out a memo yesterday uh, that uh, attempts to highlight all the things individually that did not make it in. So perhaps there's a, a way to use that. Um, in a future staff meeting to talk about some of these items and get some consensus around them in terms of how we build them into the budget. Sounds good. I, I'd like to bring to the table about the uh, having another meeting in the evening, okay. and I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. And so as I look at our schedule, because um, we want a tentative board approval by December the 15th, we, our last public hearing uh, would have been December the 6th. On a Tuesday, we can make it a Thursday, December the 8th. Um, and that will, that will be for, huh? Is that Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. We're having Tuesday, Thursday hearings. Okay. So December the 8th in the evening, which would be, uh, well, it would be a different day though. I was saying back to back evenings, but it's either Tuesday or Thursday. So we'll look at that, uh, Jeff. And so, okay. That'll work. And can I can I just say something? Credit where credit is due category. Oh. So uh, Commissioner Reese mentioned the child care issue, which we have all talked about. That is in here. Th there is something that says we are looking into providing child care for our employees. So it's not in here like we've decided and found a place. It's into here like we, this is a priority and we're working on it. So I just did want to mention that. It, it, it is a uh, a tough issue to look at for a lot of the reasons that it's that it's a tough issue across the community right now. We're running into those same exact issues as we look at um, providing options. Uh, but I want to I want to thank um, uh, Frank Spataro, Kim Pennekamp down in uh, up in HR who are actively working on this. Uh, I hope to have some options for the board to consider early uh, in 2023 on the matter, though. Right, <clears throat> which reminds me, I was, and I forgot to mention this, but on Friday, I was at the FCFC uh, Family Children's First meeting, and um, Mark Lawson, who's the CEO of Head Start over there at CAA, was saying they are so low on staff uh, for their classrooms, and he's just really really concerned about it and they can't get anybody people are not staying some people want to just stay home have chosen different careers but when you're talking about child care it's a it's a difficult thing to to manage and get together so okay so we're going to move forward thank you for this initial i appreciate it it was very comprehensive and very very good a lot of meat to chew on okay <clears throat> so we'll move to our regular agenda our engineer is here patiently waiting. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Would you like me to take by leave item number one? Okay, if you'd like. First, yes. that is a that is an engineer's one as well. Um, by leave number one is a uh, report back to the commissioners. Uh, the board asked us to review the vacation request for Franklin Alley and Charles Alley and Sims Township. We've determined that this is an unimproved fee right away for two township alleys and can be disposed of following a public hearing. And should the petitioner satisfy the vacation requirements, uh, we will get back with you and schedule that hearing. Okay. So this is just for the board to receive. Okay. Any questions or comments? Yep. Okay, so I'll make a motion to receive for the record. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Dreamhouse? Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Item number one, is resolution authorizing an agreement between um, 
for the improvements of Hamilton Avenue but for uh, North College Hill, the city of North College Hill and the Board of County Commissioners. This is for a 2021 municipal road fund project. This is the agreement between uh, the board and uh, North College Hill so we can get them money to complete this project. Thank you. Questions or comments? Nope. Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to adopt item one. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Item number two is a resolution setting the viewing and hearing dates and directing the petitioner to prepare and submit a survey plat for the proposed vacation of Breezy Acres Drive um, and to Struble Road Development Company in uh, Colerain Township as provided for in section 5553 of the ORC. Uh, we're proposing a public hearing date of December 8th at 1.15. Okay, thank you. Questions, comments? Hearing none, make a motion to uh, adopt item two. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you. Item number three is the engineer's report on the annexation petition for 2.474 acres from Sims Township to the city of Loveland. This is called the Hopewell Parcels Annexation. Um, this was received by the board on October 20th. And uh, the engineer's office has evaluated the petition for accuracy of the plat, legal description, and ownership of the area that be annexed. And we find it to all be accurate on the pe uh, petition. Thank you. Questions, comments? Make a motion to adopt item three. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Treehouse? Yes. Thank you. Item number four is uh, the engineer's report on the annexation petition for 9.9088 acres from Harrison Township to the city of Harrison. This is the Weesbrod annexation. Uh, this was brought to the board on uh, October 27th. The engineer's office has reviewed it um, and found the petition petition for uh, for accuracy of the plat, legal description and ownership and finds it all to be accurate. Thank you, questions, comments? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to adopt item four. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you, thank, thank you. you so much. Michael, our lawyer, I like to ask the question. Sometimes I say adopt, other, other times I say approve. Uh, so is there one that's more correct than the other? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. So we're going to move forward on our consent Agenda items, items five through 21, just I will say a little bit about them. Item number five is a resolution authorizing the county administrator to negotiate and enter a purchase agreement by and between the board of the county commissioners and Trivian Interactive LLC for $635,606. Um, six and seven are annexations of acres of land. Um, under the commission, um, item eight, a, a small amount of money, uh, but it is money we need to approve. Resolution P12622 to accept and authorize the execution of a contract uh, between then and now and uh, Job and Family Services and the Urban League for Leader Institute tuition, $3,800. Item nine, a budget adjustment number 32 for personnel costs in the probate court and grants in the municipal court probation and emergency management for 2.2 million. And under county facilities, item 10, resolution authorizing the use of credit cards by Hamilton County Facilities Department providing guidelines and usage of the same for 6.6 6.6 million, 6,600. 6, um, item 11, a resolution authorizing the use of credit cards by facilities department, providing guidelines, MasterCard 27,900. Under JFS, a resolution authorizing agreement between uh, JFS on behalf of uh, Hamilton County Department of JFS for Human Resources Services, no money involved on that. But under 13, a resolution 
authorizing an award uh, of K KBO2 22R in execution of agreement between Hamilton County Board of County Commissioners on behalf of the Hamilton County Department of Jobs and Families and Napier Truck Driver Training Incorporated for truck driver training, very good, uh, and assistance program, SNAP and employment training, ENT, for consumers for truck driver training for 214,000, that's awesome. Um, Item 14, resolution number J147-22, authorizing renewal number one of the original agreement with Hearn House, who is the provider and the Board of Hamilton County on behalf of JFS for independent living services, 250,000. Under planning and development, a resolution authorizing the county administrator to enter to agreement with the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Cincinnati, 50,000. Uh, resolution 16, authorizing an administrator into an agreement with Immigrant and Refugee Law Center for 100,000. 17, a resolution authorizing our administrator for 65,000 for Legal Aid Society. 18, 70,000, which authorizes our community, our county administrator to enter into agreement with Cincy Smiles Foundation. These are all great things. Um, and 19, a resolution authorizing their administrator to enter to agreement with Pro Seniors Incorporated, 55,000. Uh, number 20, a resolution authorizing their administrator to enter an agreement with St. Vincent de Paul for 60,000, which is another place you can get pharmacy uh, issues um, taken care of. You need to contact them. They're really good on their free uh, pharmacy clinic. Uh, 21, probate court. 24,000 resolution using the uh, authorizing the use of credit cards by Hamilton County Probate Court. Um, and we finished the by -lave. So I uh, will open it up for my colleagues for any uh, comments for five through 21. Vice President Reese. Okay, no comments? Okay, great. I would like to make, make a motion to approve items five through 21. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you so much. With no further business to come before this board, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you.